Here are five ways to reduce stress, reduce anxiety, improve digestion, and honestly improve every aspect of your well being. So one of the best ways to improve your health, reduce stress, and really improve your overall well-being is to activate the vagus nerve. So before I get into this video, I just want to talk about what the vagus nerve is because all of the tips that I share are really going towards the same goal, which is stimulating the vagus nerve. So the vagus nerve runs on two sides of your body. You've got it on your right and left side of your brain, and it runs all the way down your body into your stomach and hits almost every organ along the way, including your heart, including your stomach, so you can imagine that it would impact almost everything in your body. I actually love that the word vagus in Latin means wanderer because it wanders throughout your whole body. I just, sometimes when I associate mnemonic devices like that, it helps me remember things. That's how I passed pharmacy school. So it goes throughout your body like this and when it's stimulated, it's going to activate your rest and digest. So let's just take a step back and talk about the two activation systems we have in our body. We have the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. So. Sympathetic is fight or flight, which I feel like more people are accustomed to that verbiage, the fight or flight. We can take this all the way back to cavemen when they're out in the wild fighting a tiger and you have to decide, am I going to sit here and fight or am I going to flight, AKA run? So that stress response with adrenaline and cortisol is actually good because it's helping you like run and fight and do what you have to do. However, in the modern day world, we're not fighting tigers, but we still have this ability for our body to go into this fight or flight. And it happens with emotional stress, really any stress that we're experiencing. And because we don't actually have to fight a lion, we're holding this stress and keeping it inside of us. And these elevated levels of cortisol and different hormones that impact our body can cause chronic illness, pain, anxiety, so many other things that we just are trying to avoid. So that's the sympathetic nervous system, fight or flight. The parasympathetic nervous system is basically the opposite. And we refer to this as rest and digest. So when this is activated, it's going to help you digest your food, relax, reduce feelings of stress and tension, all the opposite of what the sympathetic nervous system does. Those of us in the health and wellness space are always looking for ways to activate the vagus nerve or parasympathetic nervous system because that's going to relax the body. And now there's just so much research that shows stress and anxiety completely impacts your body, which why should it not? Our brain is not a separate part of our body. I always find that fascinating when we're like, brain and body, it's all connected. So stimulating the vagus nerve is what all of these methods that I'm gonna talk about in this video do. Not only can the vagus nerve impact stress, but it also deeply impacts digestion because it runs into your stomach. It has signals from your brain that tell your body to push along food, digest, and pass it along to your small intestines. I know I've had gut health issues for a long time. I'm still on that journey, but in every single functional medicine doctor or holistic practitioner that I've come across or talked to has always focused on vagus nerve stimulation. Okay, so now let's get into how we can actually activate the vagus nerve. And one thing I love about this is that all of these tips are free, they're accessible, you can do them at home, and they really don't take that long. So let's get into it. The first thing you can do is cold exposure. So I'm sure you've seen ice baths and cold showers and cryotherapy. These are things that have been trending for a long time for good reason. There are so many different health benefits. One of the biggest ones being vagus nerve stimulation. So when you're in this cold temperature, it's weird because you would think it stresses you out, but it actually stimulates the vagus nerve. So a few ways you could do this are try taking a cold shower. I personally think a cold shower is harder than a cold bath. There's something about the water, I, I might not be a popular opinion, but if the cold shower is hard for you, I would recommend filling your bathtub with cold water, dumping in some ice and just starting at 30 seconds, working your way up to like two or three minutes. Of course, check with your doctor before you do cold exposure. There are some people who this might not be the best decision for, so please always ask. I will say too, with cold exposure, I am the type of person who's always cold. Like hate anything cold, love to be in a cozy blanket, love being warm, I've always been like this. So to tell me to get into an ice bath is insane. And I've gotten up to seven minutes, which I'm so proud of. Once you get past like two minutes, it's kind of all the same. And what I think is cool is you get in there, I scream out loud initially, I've got to like get that energy out. And then you just settle into it. And I always do a breathing meditation while I'm in there and your body all of a sudden, it's like, and you just like relax into it and I lose track of the time. Of course, you can't stay in that long. It's just short periods. So 
You could do an ice bath, you could do a cold shower. You can also go outside in cold weather for 10 minutes. Like when it's in the winter, you could just take a walk outside. If you have access to somewhere with cryotherapy, these are all different ways. One last way that could be easier is actually just dipping your face in a bucket of ice water. Some of you may have seen this as a tip for stress and anxiety. This is exactly why, now you understand. So you could get a cold bucket. I think the key is to make sure at least half of your cheeks and your forehead and your face are immersed in the cold water. So those are all different ways that you can incorporate it. After you get out of the cold exposure, you are invigorated. Like you feel more energized. It's really good, I can attest to that. The second tip is exercise, but it's not just the type of exercise you think. So we're talking about vocal cord exercise. There has been research to show that when you stimulate your vocal cords, singing, gargling, chanting, they have to be loud because you actually wanna stimulate the vocal cords. This activates the vagus nerve and puts you into rest and digest. As I was learning this, I wondered if this is why certain types of meditation include chanting. I'm sure there's so much more to it, but I wonder if there's some kind of intuitive knowledge that when you chant, it actually relaxes your body because so much of meditation is relaxation. So that's one form of vocal cord exercise. And then of course, physical exercise. I don't think there's many ailments or things that improve your well being that don't include physical exercise. So this could be cardio, weight training, hit whatever works for you in terms of getting physical activity that's always going to help. And it has been shown to stimulate the vagus nerve. Tip number three is deep breathing. And I love this one because you can literally do it anytime, anywhere. You don't need any equipment. It doesn't cost you anything. And I like that it's something that's, you know, an ancient and modern practice. And we're now appreciating how good this is for us and for so many different aspects of our health. So when you're deep breathing, you really wanna do deep belly breathing. Picture your stomach, not even picture, actually expand your stomach when you're breathing. And you want your exhale to be longer than your inhale. This is what's going to really stimulate the vagus nerve and help you relax. There's also this natural thing that humans tend to do when you're stressed, you hold your breath. I do this thing when I exercise where like, I'm always holding my breath during the movements. Let's say during like weight training and my trainers have always been like, breathe. I don't know why it's like a natural reaction. I think maybe when we're stressed, we just hold our breath and stop breathing. Another way this helps you know, when you're breathing and you're focusing on your breathing, your body has one thing to focus on at a time, which is why some people who are having a panic attack or hyperventilating will breathe into a bag and focus on their breathing. So there's so many different reasons why this can help. And I will say, I was breathing wrong for years, up until about three years ago, in terms of deep breathing, meditation. I would sit in yoga classes and we would do breath work. And I was like, this just doesn't feel good. This is not relaxing me. I don't get it. And I just thought it didn't work. But once I actually learned how to do it, for me, what worked was really feeling the inside of my body. I felt like I wasn't connecting to it. And now when I deep breathe, it's like I'm feeling the breath throughout my body, in my stomach, up my chest. And I was like, okay, I have access to actually feeling the inside of my body, which sounds weird, but I don't know if I was just shut off to it or for whatever reason, now that I connect to it, it is the most relaxing thing and I genuinely look forward to it. If you're new to deep breathing, an easy way to start is focusing on six breaths per minute so you know that you're really going at a slow pace. And honestly, do whatever you can. I would say like 10 minutes is great, 15 minutes is great, but so is three, so is five. Whatever you're going to do, don't let that stop you from not doing it. Like, oh, I don't have 12 minutes to do my breathing. If you have three minutes, do it. And this is also something you can access throughout the day which I've learned might even be better than just doing it in the morning because I feel like we have so many morning practices, right? Morning meditation, morning exercise. And then throughout the day, we might have all these stressors when this is something we could access really easily. You can't go to the gym or you might not wanna gargle out loud at work in the middle of the day, but what you can do is deep breathing in your car, in the bathroom stall, anywhere you can just get it in and put your body into a relaxed state. If your deep breathing isn't relaxing you, I would say you're not doing it right yet and just keep trying different methods until you really access that part of you. The fourth tip is massage and specifically foot massage. I think any massage throughout the body is obviously so relaxing and it's like you're going in a circle. When you're relaxed, you're gonna stimulate the vagus nerve. When you stimulate the vagus nerve, you're gonna be relaxed. So anything that gets you into that state, but a foot massage specifically has these pressure points that can stimulate the vagus nerve. So that's a less expensive massage, which is also great. I mean, I don't know if you guys live in a city, but in New York and LA, you walk down the street and there's so many foot massage places. And you can also do this to yourself. 
which obviously isn't as relaxing, but pressure point massage, especially on your foot while you're watching TV, just practicing could be really great. And honestly, it's an amazing form of self-care. And the last tip is diet. And specifically one food group that helps stimulate vagus nerve is omega-3 fatty acids. So omega-3s are found in fish, specifically salmon, walnuts. Adding these to your diet are so good for a variety of reasons. They're great for your heart. So that would be a great idea. I would recommend always trying to find wild caught or I personally try to stick to seafood that has the lowest amounts of mercury. So salmon is one that has the lowest amounts of mercury. Specific types of tuna, like albacore tuna has higher, but there's one called tongal tuna. So just Google it. This is an easy search and trying to increase this in your diet can be really good. The omegas are definitely a good tip. For me personally, since I think when I'm stressed, there's less vagus nerve stimulation. And when there's more vagus nerve stimulation, I'm less stressed. It would make sense to think that things that rev you up or make you anxious might also help. This one is more just my personal opinion on it, but I cut caffeine a couple years ago because I was seeing that my hormones were really out of balance and I just wanted to experiment with it. And after that initial shock of, oh my God, I'm so exhausted. I didn't realize I was addicted to caffeine. I just don't even crave it or need it. The only thing I'll have is like matcha sometimes. I mean, I actually love matcha. So a couple times a week, but I'm not doing like numerous cups of caffeinated coffee. And I just find that when I do, I feel a little bit more anxious. So anything I can do to keep my body in a relaxed state is better for me. So you can take that one with a grain of salt. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you do try one of these tips, let me know which one you try. Let me know if it works for you, what worked best. And if you have any questions at all, please leave it in the comments.